Okay, lesson 34, part two, is division with fractions in real world problems. Go ahead and get this title into your notes and get ready to go, and you may as well go ahead and put the steps down from our previous lesson because we'll be using those again. Put them at the top of your notes so you can refer back to them each time. Push play when you're ready to begin. Okay, and this is real world problem one, so again, this one's gonna entail a lot of writing into your notes. Go ahead, but you can push the pause button whenever you need to so you can write it down. The pizza shop has three quarters of a pizza left at the end of the night. At the last minute, six customers walk in. They split the remainder of the pizza equally. Splitting equally is a key division word. How much pizza did each customer receive? Go ahead and finish copying that down, and then we'll go ahead and do this one together. Push play when you're ready to go. Okay, so we need to first of all look at how much pizza is left. Well, there's three quarters of a pizza. Three quarters is what's left. And then how many times are we gonna be splitting it up? How many customers walked in? We had six customers walked in, so we're gonna be splitting it six times equally. Splitting equally is division. Here's our pizza, so you can see what's going on. Of a whole pizza, three-fourths of it are left. That's what's available. And we're going to share it six times equally. So it would look like one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six shared equally. And each person is getting one of those. But that's not one out of six because if this were also still there, that pizza would have been cut into a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what they're actually getting is one out of eight pieces is what our answer should be. So now let's go through our steps and see if that's what we get. Step one, change it to a fraction. That is a fraction. I can change that to a fraction by putting a one under it. Step two, reciprocal the second fraction is divide of a division it's like a double negative. We're going to flip things all on its head. Reciprocal, let's flip that on its head. So it'll be 1 over 6. And then we make it times. The 3 4 stays the same. Step 3, now it's just our multiplication steps. Cross, reduce. Did anything going into both 1 and 4? No, not anything. How about 3 and 6? Yeah, 3 goes into 3 evenly and into 6 evenly. So let's do that. 3's into 3 once and 3's into 6 twice. Now we're on multiply straight. One times one is one. And four times two is eight. So each customer got one eighth of a slice, just like our drawing showed us. Okay, we do number two. Now you don't need to copy all of this down because you've already copied that down at the top of your page. But we do number two. Here's our next word problem. You do need to copy this down. There was seven eighths gallons of orange juice left in the pitcher. We need to pour, that should say pour. Hang on just a second, I'll fix it. Okay, it's fixed. We need to pour the juice into one quarter gallon containers. How many containers will we fill? So on this one, we have a whole, go ahead and copy that down. I'll give you time to copy that down and then I'll explain it through. Push play when you're ready. Okay, so you always want to start with how much do you have? How much is the whole amount that we have to give away? And so I drew a picture over here of um, orange juice. It's kind of a skinny picture, but it's a picture of orange juice where we can pour out. And in it, the whole thing would be one full. One part, two part, three part, four part, five part, six part, seven part. And then that would be the eighth part. Eight out of eight would be the whole thing. We don't have eight out of eight, we have seven out of eight. So we have almost the whole thing. And what they wanna know is how many quarter gallons could we fill? So we start with seven eighths, that's how much we started with, seven eighths of a gallon. And we'll be dividing it into quarter gallon containers. All right, so let's look at what a quarter gallon would be. A quarter gallon is one out of four, so we're splitting this whole gallon into four equal pieces. Here, here, 
here, and then that would be the fourth one. So of these quarter gallons, how many could we fill? Well, we have one full quarter gallon, two full quarter gallons, three full quarter gallons, and then this one is uh, only one out of the two that are left. There's two left and one out of the two. One out of the two always looks like that. One out of two, one half. So we should be able to fill three and a half quarter gallons. That's in picture form. Now let's do this in the steps form that we've learned. Change everything to a fraction. Yes, that's a fraction. Yes, that's a fraction. Do the reciprocal of the second fraction so that we can make this a multiply question because it's division of division. We're going to flip everything on its head. So 7 eighths stays the same. We're going to change that to times and we can do that only because we're flipping that guy upside down, reciprocal. Now we're on cross reduce. 7 and 1, no, nothing goes into both of those. Before and 8 does, um, we have 4 goes into 4 once and 4 goes into 8 twice. Now we're on the multiply straight across. 7 times 1 is 7 and 2 times 1 is 2. And now we're on the convert reduce step convert. Well, he's an upside down snowman. He's an improper fraction because the big number is on top of the little number. So he's upside down on his head. So we change that by going bottom into top. Remainder is the numerator. So two fits into seven. Uh, two times three is six. That fits. Two times four is eight. That's too high. So it's got to be three. Our remainder becomes our numerator. Denom uh, denominator stays the two and you get three and one half, just like our picture version did. And that's the answer. You can make three and one half quarter gallons. Okay, and this is we do number three. It's the last we do, and then you only have one you do after this. Um, we don't need to copy this down because it should be at the top of your page, so you should have that up in front of you. We do need you to copy this down. We have three cans of paint. To paint one room, we need one-fifth of a can. How many rooms can we paint? So go ahead and copy that down and push play when you're ready to begin. Okay, so we always start off with how much is the entire amount that we have before we figure out how many times we're splitting it out. And the entire amount that we have is three cans of paint. So we have three whole cans of paint. How are we splitting it up? Well, we know that one fifth of a can will paint one room, so one room, so we're splitting it up in fifths, one fifths. Now, before we go solving it with our steps, let's look at it in picture version. I've drawn three cans of paint here. And I can paint a, a one room with one fifth of a can. That means that if I split one of these cans into five equal pieces, oops, I need a pen. One, two, three, four and five, I can paint one room, two room, three room, four room, and five rooms with just that one can. And if I keep going, because I have three cans, you can probably do the math in your head on that, that would be six, seven, eight, nine, ten rooms now. And if I keep going, most of you know the answer already now, once you see it from the picture. That's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I can paint 15 rooms with three cans of paint since it only takes up that little much for one room. That's the answer in picture form. Let's go through the steps so you can see that you can always just use the steps. Step one, change everything to a fraction. Okay, well three can be a fraction by putting a one under it and one-fifth is already a fraction. Do the reciprocal of the second fraction. It's divide, I want it to be multiply, so flip this all around, and we're gonna get three over one times five over one. Cross reduce if you can, one and five, nope. One and three, nope. Multiply straight across, okay. Three times five is 15. And one times one 
is 1. Convert if you need to. Yes, this is an improper fraction in upside down snowman. That's a big number compared to the little bitty head. So um, we divide bottom into top. Well, 1 is going to go into 15 exactly 15 times. That's why when you put a 1 under a number, it doesn't change it with nothing left over. So your answer ends up being 15. So this is in um, our steps version, and this is in picture version. We ended up with the same answer. Let's go on to the you do. Okay, now we're on the you do, and we're only doing one you do, so you're nearly done here. I've put the steps here, but again, you already have those in your notes, so you don't need to write that down over again. You do need to write this word problem down, though. We have two and one half cups of milk. We will pour the milk into one fourth cup containers. How many containers will we fill? Go ahead and push pause and figure this one out, and then see um, push play to see if you have the answer correct. Okay, so you have some sort of answer there. You went as far as you could until you got stuck, or all the way through till you had an answer. You always start with what's the entire amount? What did I start with? What is the amount that I have? Well, I have two and a half cups of milk before I start pouring it anywhere. So that's the number I start with, two and one half. And what, am I, what types of pieces am I splitting it into is your divisor. And I'm splitting it into one quarter cup pieces. Okay, so now you may have used the steps because you're probably very comfortable with that right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show in picture format so you can see what's going on and that your brain is connecting both to each other. So what I've drawn here is um, these are supposed to be measuring cups like you know that you cook with. So there's one cup, two cups, and then a half of another cup. So two and a half uh, cups of milk. And I'm going to split them into quarter cup containers. All right, well, if I split this into a quarter cup container, one, two, three, one out of four, how many fourths can I make to be full? That's one, two, three, four. Then out of this one, I get the same thing, which would be five, six, seven, eight. This one, one, two, three of the one that's not there, and then four. But these aren't there. I have this one, though, that's nine, and this one is ten. So out of if I split those into quarter cup containers, I should be able to get ten total quarter cup containers. Let's see if when we do it with the steps we get the same thing. We should get the same thing. Change everything to a fraction. This is a mixed number, so I multiply, add, bring it to the side. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. The denominator stays the same. It was a 2, it stays a 2. 1 fourth is already a fraction, so I leave him alone. It's division, and I'd like to make it multiplication, so I can do that. If I flip that second fraction on his head, I undo the divide, and that undoes that divide, undoes that divide, makes it multiply. So it's going to look like this, 5 over 2 times 4 over 1. So I just flipped that guy around. Next step, cross reduce. I check the crosses, 5 and 1. Is there a number that goes into both of them? No. But 2 and 4, there is. 2 goes evenly into that, and 2 goes evenly into that. So 2 goes into 2 once, and 2 goes into 4 twice. And then I multiply straight across. 5 times 2 is 10. And 1 times 1 is 1. Convert if you need to. I do need to. That's an improper fraction with a big number over the tiny number. Um, but when the 1 underneath it, that's an easy math one. 1 fits into 10 exactly 10 times with nothing left over. So I'll fill 10 quarter cup pieces. So my answer is 10. So either in picture format or in the steps format, I get the same answer. Hopefully that's what you got. If this is making very good sense to you, go ahead and get your closure questions and give it a shot. If you need to rewind at any point in this video, go ahead and do that to hear it again. The more times you see it and hear it, the better chance you have of having it all click together. And if that doesn't work, come see me. We'll make up some problems together and solve them together.